Hi, everyone. My name is Cami. I'm with the School of Engineering at the University of Southern California. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm sorry a little bit about the lighting here in my office. It's um the the days are getting shorter, so it's it's uh evening here. Um, and so um, I'm going to go ahead and just get started. Uh, first, I'd like to thank you all for your interest in the Communication Data Science Program. And today we have the pleasure of having Professor Jessica Neff here, who is the co-director of this um, program. And she'll be here to uh, give a nice overview of the program. And uh, first, what I will do is just take about five minutes and just go over a few items and then give you just a quick overview. Um, the first thing is, um, so we're just going to have a short uh, presentation and then Professor Neff will be going over um, the specifics about the program. Uh, and um, when you do have questions after the conclusion of her presentation, please do use the Q&A window. Um, many of you may be accustomed to using the chat, but we find that it's a little bit um, easier to make sure we answer your questions properly if you use the Q&A window. Um, and that's where oftentimes um, we'll put um, in the chat window some of the helpful links for you. So it'll be easier to find uh, there if we use the chat window for that purpose. And then um, do us a big favor um, because some of you sometimes might have multi-part questions or maybe if um, Professor Neff or I um, want to ask you to clarify a question that you have, it's easier if you log in with your real name. Um, sometimes a lot of our attendees show up as um, anonymous attendee. And if you have questions that have multiple parts, it's easier for us to know who's asking what. So um, do us a favor and just um, log in with a, a name other than anonymous attendee, and that will help us uh, answer your questions properly. Um, Okay, so as I said, um, this presentation um, and information session is uh, related to our communication data science program, and it is uh, being hosted by myself and Dr. Jessica Neff from the School of Communications, and I am from the School of Engineering here at USC. Um, and for those of you who don't know, I'll just kind of go ahead and do this really quickly. Um, the University of Southern California, uh, many of you uh, may be familiar with the university. Um, we're located here in Los Angeles, and we're one of the world's leading private research universities um, with 22 academic schools and divisions, including the School of Communication and Engineering. And what's really nice about that is that the university is, uh, is really great about um, interdisciplinary education, which is illustrated by this program. Um, we have a very diverse student population here with students from over 110 countries, and then over almost 500,000 um, alumni worldwide. Okay, so that's just a little bit about the university. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing now and I'll turn it over to Professor Neff to be able to talk about the program. And uh, I will do that now. Give me one second. Great. Thank you so okay. much. Can you sure. And I will try to get my slides up here. Just give me one moment. Okay. All right. So, all right. Are you seeing my full slides here? Yes, I can see them. Great, sorry. Okay, wonderful. Um, good evening, everyone, or good morning, depending upon what part of the world you're joining us from. Um, as Kimmy mentioned, my name is Jessica Neff, and I am the co-director of the MS and Communication Data Science Program, um, which is jointly offered by USC Annenberg and USC Viterbi. Um, and I'll, and I'll, before I actually, I'll go back one slide, I'll note the co-director title is an important one because this is a joint program. And so I do have a counterpart in the School of Engineering, Dr. Yolanda Gill, who oversees all of the interdisciplinary data science programs that Viterbi offers. Um, so this really is a collaborative endeavor in this degree. So I'd like to start by kind of providing just an overview of the landscape of what we mean by interdisciplinary data science. Um, this has really been a growing area of study. Um, when we think about what is what communication data science is, it's sitting at the intersection of two fields, right? So if you were to join us for one of our pure communication master's programs, you know, in the um, bucket on the right, right, you'd be getting deep expertise in marketing, media, entertainment, communication strategy, all of those sorts of things. Um, if you were in a pure computer science program, you'd be having really the theoretical side of computer science. 
data science is where we start to apply computing, the kind of um, theoretical side of it to practical real world questions. And so the nexus of these two fields, communication data science, you're taking data science principles and leveraging them to address questions that fall within the realm of communication. And so this is a degree that again, is really a boundary spinning degree that sits at the edge of um, two disciplines. Um, hope you're seeing my presenter view, okay. Hmm, let me stop sharing and try that again. Sorry about that. Um, let's see if this works. Are you seeing my full screen now? Yes. yes. Okay, sorry about that. I'm using a new monitor and sometimes the settings are a little bit funny. So thanks for letting me know. Um, Okay, great. So this, as I mentioned before, this is a joint degree program offered as a collaborative endeavor between the Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism and the Viterbi School of Engineering. In this degree, your courses are evenly split across the two schools. So you spend half of your time at Viterbi and half of your time at Annenberg. So in this 32 unit degree, you take four classes in each school for a total of eight classes. This degree has been around for about six years now. We first launched in fall of 2016. We had just five students in that first incoming class. Now we're averaging approximately 50 students a year. So we've had considerable growth. Um, we could go bigger, but we actually think that that's a perfect size right now for, for this program. Um, this is really the first master's degree of its kind. So there are other kind of general applied data science programs um, across a variety of different types of schools, but there's no program that, to my knowledge, that is a collective endeavor between a school of communication and a school of engineering. And so this is a really kind of unique and cutting edge um, type of degree. Um, it's a STEM OPT qualified degree. So for those of you who might be international students and are have wondering, you know, would I be um, eligible for that visa extension for OPT after the completion of this program, you would. It's a master's of science degree. So um, that is appealing to some students. All right. So what are we training you to do in this program? A little bit about the curriculum itself. So we're providing that foundational training and core concepts of data science um, and giving you that familiarity with data oriented methodologies in communication. Um, and you're also getting the, so in addition to the data science side, you're getting the deep expertise in communication. So you're having that ability to tell a story with data, to communicate rigorous and data-backed solutions to broad and diverse ranges of stakeholders, to leverage data to address challenges of users and strategy and content um, in the realm of you know, communication and media. Um, there is some flexibility in this curriculum, though it's less flexible perhaps than other programs you might be looking at. So, you know, at Annenberg, we have a number of kind of pure communication programs that have lots of space for lots of different electives. In a, in a joint program where you're taking classes in two schools, you're going to have a little bit less space for that because you have core requirements um, that come from both schools. That being said, there is this ability to kind of customize your curriculum based on your background. So this degree was designed for students who ha have no technical background at all, right? Our one hard requirement is that you need to have taken two college level math classes. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, and so if you fall in that, group of students, you know, this um, can be an accessible program for you. So you shouldn't be scared off by the those data science classes. However, we can also accommodate students who might have more advanced technical foundations and we have the ability to kind of um, opt out of um, more basic classes and, and take more advanced classes depending on your background. So those sorts of um, issues are considered on a case by case basis um, in conversation with my co-director and our advising team. So just know that there is that, that flexibility that can be built into our curriculum. So a little bit more about the specifics of the curriculum. What do the, because the class structure look like? So at Viterbi, you take a total of 16 units 12 of those units are required. And so there's this, these classes listed on the left um, are shown in the order generally that you would take them. So the first class that all students take in their um, fall semester when they join us is DSC 549, Introduction to Computational Thinking and Data Science. This is that scaffolding class that provides you 
with the necessary knowledge that you need. So when you go on to your more advanced classes, when you're starting to actually learn Python, you have the basic understanding that you need um, of underlying logic and computational thinking. So that's a class that all of our students take um, in their first semester. Um, then you'll go on to take more advanced data science classes, so principles of programming for informatics and data science at scale. And then you have space for one elective, and I'll talk about some of the elective options in just a moment. Um, for your Annenberg curriculum, um, eight, of, eight of your 16 units at Annenberg are required. So you have two core classes at Annenberg. The first is COM 502, Theoretical Approaches to Multidisciplinary Design Projects. That's another class that all students take in their first fall semester with us. And this is an introductory theory class. Um, the goal of this class is to provide you with um, exposure to a wide range of different theoretical approaches from communication in the social sciences, but with a very specific emphasis on leveraging theory to address real world challenges and issues. So it is an applied theory class. Um, so you'll be taking you know, those sorts of theories and saying, how can what can I learn from this theoretical framework that will help me approach or address a particular type of applied problem? Um, the other core class that you have at Annenberg is COM 557, Data Science for Communication and Social Networks. This is a unique and exciting class because it really brings together the curriculum from both schools. This class is, was designed and is taught by a professor, Dr. Emilio Ferrara, who is actually joint appointed at Viterbi and Annenberg. So he um, is a computer scientist who does um, applied research in the realm of communication. So he kind of exemplifies everything that this degree is about and has designed this class um, that is really um, you know, fantastic at integrating our two curricula. And so most students take this in their second year in the program because it um, let, builds on the data science classes that you've taken and you'll be kind of putting those skills into practice. So these are your core requirements that you have, but you also have space for some electives. So at Viterbi, you get one elective course. Um, there's something for everyone. Some students wanna go deeper into machine learning. Uh, some students are more interested in data visualization or UI UX. That's another class that's not listed here, but um, is available to you. Uh, we also have students who are interested in doing an applied research project. So there's the data science professional practicum um, that you can explore as well. Um, so there's a, a lot of different options um, for that elective course at Viterbi. At Annenberg, you have two elective classes that you can take. And so here on this list, these are all the, the elective classes that are approved. So if you see a class on this list and you want to take it, you don't have to ask for my permission. You just get clearance from an advisor. However, there are a lot of other electives always being added to the Annenberg curriculum. And so I approve most of those classes on a case-by-case -case basis, um, but generally all it takes is an email to me. And we're always adding classes. I think this last fall, we had a new class on fashion marketing. We had a new class on the metaverse. Um, just Those are just a few examples. So there's always new classes coming on board as we um, are trying to keep abreast of the most recent developments in the industry. Um, so take a look at our course catalog and look for any class that has a CMGT designation. As a general rule, all of those are available to our communication data science students. All right. Uh, so in terms of the degree requirements, I've included kind of a sample course plan of what your um, curriculum might look like. So for students, this is for students who started this fall. So you generally take two classes a semester. So two classes a semester is considered full-time at the graduate level at USC. I generally advise students not to go above and beyond this because our curriculum is rigorous and there are also so many opportunities to get involved outside of the classroom that I think it's important to leave space to explore um, the really rich academic environment that USC offers to you. Um, so with that in mind, in fall, you, most students will take that those two core classes that I just mentioned. Um, in the spring, you might take your you know, second um, core data science class, um, COM 557. Um, this is actually a one-off. Generally, that class is offered every fall, but this year it's being offered in the spring. Uh, most students choose to take an internship over the summer. And then you might be taking your DSC, DSCI 550 along with um, either COM 557 or another elective. And then in that final semester, wrapping out your uh, program with two electives. 
Um, so kind of the, the cadence of the program. So I won't spend a lot of time on this slide. This is just um, briefly about COM 502, which I already talked about. You know, I, as I mentioned, you are introduced to a wide range of different theories, um, you know, with uh, really the goal of applying those to concrete real world um, deliverables. And DSC 5, DSCI 549, again, is this course that's designed for students with no programming background who wanna have that foundational literacy um, that then enables you to go on and be successful in the more, um, advanced classes that might seem a little bit daunting for our students who don't have a background in that area, um, but it provides an important foundation for all of our all of our students. All right, um, so kind of a little bit about what our admissions funnel looked like and, and kind of some of our requirements. So the GRE is not required for this application cycle. We um, suspended that during COVID and we have not gone back to it at this point in time. So you do not need to submit your GRE. And in fact, I won't look at your GRE and your application, even if you submit it, right? Because it um, it's not fair to include that as a data point um, for some applicants and not for others. So you do not need to look at that score. It will not, or do not need to submit that score, even if you've taken it, um, it will not be a factor in the admissions decisions that we are making. Uh, TOEFL is required for all international students who did not attend a US undergraduate institution. Um, in general, I don't like to give hard and fast rules, but if you're thinking about kind of where you fall in the score range, generally looking for a writing score of at least a 26. Um, we also accept the IELTS, generally looking for a writing score of at least a 6.5 um, on the IELTS. Um, I think my average TOEFL score for incoming international students last year was probably around 107 or 108, so it's a pretty strong um, score, and that's because the Annenberg classes are writing intensive, so it's really important that you have those language foundations um, in order to be successful in those rigorous writing classes. Um, as I mentioned previously, another hard requirement is having a B or better or equivalent of a B if your university uses a different um, grading scale in two college level math classes. Um, this is an important requirement that comes from the School of Engineering as preparation for your data science classes. Uh, we are quite flexible on the types of classes that will fulfill this requirement. If you've taken any sort of calculus or statistics class, that most certainly fits the bill. Um, if you're working on your application and you're not sure if your classes will meet our requirement, um, you can certainly email me and I can take a look and let you know. Um, but there are a wide range of different classes um, that can fulfill that math requirement. Um, in terms of kind of the overall volume of applications and what that looked like last year, we ended we had a total of 266 applicants. We ended up with an incoming class of 50. Um, so that just gives you kind of a sense of, of the overall admissions funnel. Um, every year, I will say that our um, applicant pool has grown and it has gotten um, more competitive. Um, all right. So I think a, a large question that's always on people's mind when they're considering a graduate degree program is, what can I do with this degree? Um, you know, what, what sorts of jobs will it prepare me for? Um, and so these are just some possible career paths um, for students out of this program. Um, we have a lot of students who've gone on to be successful in um, product manager roles. So a product manager, if you're not familiar with that, is someone who kind of is a boundary spanner between a you know, content and strategy team in an organization and a technical team and oversees the design of digital products. Um, you know, product design is closely related to that. Um, and so our students who have this kind of interdisciplinary skill set um, seem to be really well qualified for this job and have been very successful in, in finding these types of roles. Um, we've had some students go into digital journalism. I'd say that's more of the um, minority, but definitely another career path I've seen students take. Um, the biggest growth area in terms of careers um, has been data analysts. So really our students um, are well equipped for data analyst positions, working in kind of marketing, media, entertainment organizations, deriving insights from data, um, helping to make concrete recommendations um, based on data, and then you know, tell, you know, present that in a compelling narrative that makes sense for decision makers. Um, that is really, I think, a sweet spot for students in this program. So I'm seeing some questions. I'm going to finish my presentation and then I'll come back to all the questions that are popping up um, in our Q&A um, right now. 
Um, and, I'll, and another um, note on possible career paths. These are just some sample careers. I've had students end up in all different kinds of positions. Um, most recently, a lot of students have ended up working with some of the big consulting firms. So I've had placements at BCG and McKinsey and Deloitte and those sorts of kind of more high profile um, consulting companies. I've had a lot of students go on to work in tech in some capacity. So we've had placements at, you know, Meta, um, Tum Tumblr, that was a couple of years ago, um, Coursera, Apple, right? So a lot of different types of roles. Um, had a student go on to work on in, in political consulting, um, kind of in strategy, really looking at kind of helping to um, fine tune messaging and positioning based on, you know, responses, user responses to kind of crunching numbers and data and helping that to inform um, a candidate's political strategy. So there's really a lot of um, different types of um, paths that you could take coming out of a program like this. All right, and so this is just highlighting some of those recent job placements that we've had. Um, I realize I didn't update my slides um, to the meta logo, but you'll see just some of our, um, you know, some of the companies that students have ended up in in, in the last couple of years. Um, just a, some samples here. All right, and I'd like to um, close by talking a little bit about opportunities for involvement. So as I mentioned before, there's a lot going on at USC at any given point in time. And I think in addition to the you know, fantastic curriculum that you have across the two schools, I think a real benefit of being in this degree program and at USC is all the stuff that's going on at any given point in time. So I was actually meeting with one of our incoming um, data science students a couple of weeks ago, and she came and said, Dr. Neff, I'm overwhelmed because there's so much going on and I'm having trouble choosing which events to attend and you know which activities to get involved in. So I think that's a good problem to have. Um, but it just speaks to, to all that's going on on campus. And so, you know, we always have interesting guest speakers and things like that. Um, a few particular ones that I will highlight here. So there's a great student organization uh, run out of Viterbi called Grids or Graduates Rising in Information and Data Science. They put on a lot of great events um, and have a lot of different kind of community events, um, mentorship events, speaker panels, all sorts of different things. Um, so that's been an organization I think um, that our students have really enjoyed being involved in. One of our alumni was actually the president of it of this organization last year from our program, um, even though this is a, an organization that's for all the data science programs. Um, there's also a really interesting research institute on campus that I think is of particular interest to our students. It's called CKIDS or the Center for Knowledge Powered Interdisciplinary Data Science. Uh, this um, center was founded by my co-director, uh, Dr. Yolanda Gell, and they are doing a lot of interesting interdisciplinary work across campus. Most um, relevant for our students is they have a, an event every semester called Data Fest, where faculty from around the university bring research projects for students um, and other faculty to work on, and so students can apply to work and support faculty on interesting uh, and cutting edge research projects. We've had a number of students get involved with um, this over the years. So check out that website and click on the Data Fest tab. Um, and finally, at Annenberg, we have dozens of student organizations. So everything from you know a student chorus, which one of our students was involved in last year, to um, you know, a, a women's leadership organization and everything in between. There's something for everyone. So there really are just lots of different opportunities to get involved on campus. All right. And so at this point in time, I think I've talked for just about on the 20 minute mark. And so I'll stop sharing my slides. I'll open it up to questions that you all may have. Um, all right. So. So I, I can just read through these. For those who did their undergraduate degree at a Canadian university, can TOEFL be waived? So I'm going to defer to our admissions experts here. I think the answer is yes, um, but I want to make sure I'm answering correctly. So 
Yes, um, what I'm going to do is put the, um, the link in the chat so you should read through the English language proficiency policy um, uh, by the university. Um, there is an exception for Quebec and you do need to either be um, have hold a bachelor's degree um, completed in its entirety in the US or um, some region of Canada um, besides Quebec or your native language is, is English. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put the um, Winnie, I'll put that um, link in the chat for you to kind of see if you uh, qualify for the, the waiver of the TOEFL. Great, thank you. Um, all right, and there's a question, what's the difference between admitted and certified? Um, yeah, that's a great question. So admitted are the students that we, ad that we admit to the program. Certified are the students who certify their enrollment, who decide to come to us at USC, because I'm sure like yourselves, you're probably considering multiple programs, right? And so you might be admitted to more than one program and certified are the ones who end up with us. All right. And okay. Um, is, oh, sorry, Kimmy, did you have a, something to say? Okay. Um, two courses of math above B is a must. Can I prove my math? Can I prove my math abilities by my competition courses and published paper that relate to statistics? Um, so Skylar, you could certainly email me generally as a general rule, when we're looking at a transcript, we're looking to see um, math background. And unfortunately we're not considering things like a Coursera certificate and things like that. Um, just because there's a lot of kind of variation in that sort of curriculum. Um, you know, if you had significant work experience or something that demonstrated an ability in math, it might be something that admissions could look at, but as a general rule, um, no. Um, Rohan would like to know if this program can be completed part-time. So we have had students complete the program part-time. I will say that it is designed as a full-time program for students to be, you know, based on campus with us here in Los Angeles. Um, most of the classes are offered during daytime hours. So data science classes happen at 12 or two. Um, a lot of the communication classes will be in the daytime or early evening as well. So if, um, if you have a flexible schedule, then yes, but if you're working full time, it might not be the best fit for you. Um, all right, and I have another student asking about the math requirement. Um, yeah, and so you're asking if your application will be rejected. So a lot of times I've had students who said, oh, I just found out about this program and I don't have the math requirement, but what, what can I do? I still wanna apply. So I will, I have recommended that students can fulfill the requirement at a community college, for example, that's a great and kind of cost-effective option. Um, if you are someone who's really interested in this program, want to fulfill that math requirement, but it's not going to be done in time for our admissions deadline, I'm keeping a, I'm keeping track. So if you're one of those students, send me your information, let me know that you're planning that. And then when you fulfill the math requirement, we can kind of add that information to your um, application, kind of move forward from there because it is a hard requirement that comes from the School of Engineering. Um, Wendy's got questions about how to stand out from the large applicant pool. So yeah, I'm really glad you asked this because um, it reminds me of something that I didn't mention, which has to do with kind of the statement of purpose and how do you stand out? So, you know, in addition to academic excellence, right? So we're looking at your... Um, your GPA, we're looking at your performance in specific relevant coursework. Um, I'm looking at your CV, you know, what have you done as an undergrad or, you know, work experience, if, if that's relevant, that's not required for this program. Um, you know, do you have interesting volunteer experiences or internships, right? What have you done um, that kind of, you know, shows your initiative. It doesn't have to be specifically in the domain of this program, but really we're, we're looking for students who are hardworking um, and who've had a diverse range of experiences. Uh, when I'm looking at statements of purpose, really in, in addition to, um, I'm looking at writing. It's a great way that I can evaluate writing. Um, don't have someone ghostwrite your, your statement. I can generally always tell when it has not been written by the applicant um, after reading hundreds, if not thousands of statements over the years. Um, but also I'm looking for authenticity and I'm looking for fit, right? So I've, I have denied students who had excellent academic credentials who based on their statement, it was clear that their interests and career objectives were not aligned with our curriculum and our program. So I'm really wanting to make sure that it's clear to me that you have done, or to us, I'm not the only one, All our, our admissions are joint, so they're looked at by both schools, but we want to see that you've looked at our curriculum, that you understand the program, and that it really is going to meet your ultimate career um, needs and objectives. Um, 
And, you know, kind of if you have had hardships or academic challenges, that's a great place to explain them, right? And, and kind of tell us a little bit about you and um, where you've come from. Um, and I'll say that, you know, you are required to have one letter of recommendation. You're not limited to that. And so if you want to submit, you know, two letters of recommendation, we'll certainly look at both of them. The best letters of recommendation come from people who know you well. So I'd much rather see a letter from someone who you took a small seminar with, um, as opposed to someone who says, you know, um, X student received an A in my class of 200 people, right? Because that doesn't give me a lot of information other than the fact that you're a good student, which I can see from looking at your transcripts. So find letters of recommendation from people who can speak to your strengths, um, your personality, all those sorts of things. Um, great question. Okay, transfer, and um, another person is asking if transfer credits for math classes could be enough to fulfill the requirement. Um, I bought credits for my, so I'm not sure about the buying credits from an A-level um, program. And I might have to defer this to admissions. I will say we AP classes that you received a um, four or a five on, if you are just coming straight out of undergrad and AP classes aren't, you know, 10 or 15 years behind you, those can count towards the math requirement. I'm not sure about this specific um, program, which might be different from the US system. Um, Kimmy, I don't know if you have anything to add on that. Yeah, I think we'll have to ask you to contact us separately. Sorry, we can't see your name on the, the Q&A here, um, but if you wanna contact us separately, just to kind of let us know the, the situation um, from what you're telling us right now, it's a little bit hard to determine. So you might have to take that offline. And um, maybe um, if Jessica would like to just put our contact information in the chat, you can contact us there. Yeah, I'll put, I, I didn't put my email, I don't think on my slide. Um... I'll go ahead and do that now. So please um, feel free to follow up if you have any of those, you know, kind of personal specific questions. Um, all right, another question has to do with the ratio of students from communication backgrounds to those with data science backgrounds. Um, great question. I would say we definitely skew heavily towards communication backgrounds. So um, most of the kind of most common undergraduate majors um, for incoming class students, communication, marketing, public relations, Journalism, um, by far. Also business, have a number of students coming from business or sometimes information sciences backgrounds. Um, we do have students who come from um, you know, data science, computer science, or other kind of quantitative disciplines, but it's definitely the minority. Um, so maybe like 10% of our incoming students. Um, okay. Um, what kind of applicants do you prefer? Um, okay, so, you know, Julie, this is a great question. We don't have one size fits all. I'll say we welcome we welcome students from diverse backgrounds. Uh, really, you know, we're looking for students who are, you know, I'm looking for someone who is passionate, who is, you know, enthusiastic about graduate study, who has a strong academic record, um, you know, who demonstrates good fit and alignment with our program. Um, those are really, those are kind of the ideal applicant in terms of kind of your, your past history or your background. I'm not looking for specific check boxes. Um, you know, students who have a diverse range of experiences, I think that's great. Um, but that being said, you could be coming straight out of undergrad. We're not expecting tons of work experience necessarily um, or anything like that. So really, um, you know, I think just showing showing us your authentic self and your application to the best that you can um, is really the most important thing you can do. Um, so will work experience as a data analyst carry weighting in the acceptance of the application? So certainly relevant work experience will be something, you know, one piece of the kind of overall holistic evaluation of the application, you know, that's um, kind of grades, work experience, internship, volunteer experience, um, you know, TOEFL, where relevant, uh, writing sample and letters of recommendation are all pieces of the kind of holistic evaluation of applications. Um, and I just put, um, regarding the email, I just put my email in the, the chat. So you all now I'll have that, or you can also Google me and I pop up um, at, at USC Edinburgh with my contact as well, if you forget to take it down. Um, okay, so how many applications you get or admissions? Um, so we don't set a, a hard target. So in terms of the number of applicants that we will admit, you know, generally the class size will be roughly probably in the 50 to 60 range, um, but we have flexibility based on the quality of the applicant pool that we have, um, but we won't be getting huge, but we'll be somewhere in that range. Um, MSDS, I'm not sure maybe are you, if you're referring, 
if you're referring to the applied data science program, I can't speak to that program because I'm not affiliated with it, but um, I'm sure there's um, info, info sessions, um, recorded info sessions available. If there's not any upcoming, so you can get information about that program. Um, all right, so for required math courses, what do you um, suggest um, if we don't have access to community college? I'm an international student. Um, if you're still enrolled in undergraduate institution, I would recommend trying to take um, classes at your undergraduate institution. Um, if that is not an option to you, there might be other online sorts of courses available, though, as I said, we don't take like MOOCs and things like that. Um, but I can, um, if you want to email me offline, we can kind of talk further about that. Um, all right, and Julie would like to know about the recommendation letters. Will you read both letters? Absolutely. You put both two letters in there. I will, I always read all the letters that I see. So yes, sure thing. And, and, and you are not counted against. If you have one letter, that's fine. That's our requirement. But if you want to put more, I'll read them. Okay. Um, there's a question about um, foundations of computer science and applied statistics. Um, yes, those classes should both be fine. If you want to email me and send a specific syllabus, and I can just confirm for you um, fully that those will be considered. But I think the based on the titles, those should be fine. Um, and someone wants to know about kind of different um, academic backgrounds versus uh, work experience. Um, so we look at the whole package, right? So I, you know, I'm not just looking at solely at GPA. So our admissions are holistic. And so applicants might be stronger on one dimension and weaker on another. So it really is a holistic process um, of reviewing files. And so you might have, you know, be weaker in one area than some applicants, but stronger in others. So um, yes, that's, that's a possibility. Um, and so how can you know a grade B is equivalent if we have done our undergraduate studies in another country? So that's something we'll have to, I don't know if, um, our graduate advisors um, know about that, but I'll have to check. We could also check with admissions. Um, I know that there are equivalency scales for that. I don't know offhand, but we we commonly deal with this situation and, and are able to um, help you convert that. So can follow up. And then, um, sorry, if I could just interject here. Um, usually, yeah, obviously we use the B or better or 3.0, um, but then in your country, you don't need to translate your um, GPA onto that scale when you submit your application, but you can take a look at the um, webpage, which I'll put in the chat. And usually like in different countries, you know, it would be something like 80% if, if you're using the percentage scale and things like that. So if you kind of feel like you're a strong student in that area, I would definitely kind of encourage you to apply, but I'll go ahead and put the link in the chat. Great, thank you. Um, students, nationality, age, what kind of jobs? So I think I already answered the question about, you know, types of jobs that you'll get after um, graduation. Um, age, I would say that we skew younger in this program. The majority of our students are coming straight out of undergraduate or um, maybe just have a couple of years of work experience. That being said, I also have applicants who um, you know, have been working for a number of years, 15 years, 20 years, and have decided to come back to school. So we have a little little bit of everything, but definitely skews to be a little bit younger. Um, in terms of nationality, we do have a heavy representation of students from East Asia in this program. So I would say that is definitely a large percentage of our students, um, but we also have students um, from Canada, South America, and the United States. Um, so yeah, average age, I don't know offhand. I would say that it's probably in the early to mid twenties though. It is a, it is a younger um, pro, um, group, but as I said before, we do have students from a range of ages. Um, so how would you describe the culture of the students, alumni and faculty for this amazing program? You know, I think it's hard to just categorize in a nutshell because you have the cultures of two different schools and two different types of faculties. Um, so I can speak specifically to, um, Annenberg, um, because that's where I'm affiliated. Um, I think that um, Annenberg is a place that is very open, very inclusive, um, and op uh, um, accepting of new ideas and innovation. So it's a space where I think there's a lot of support for testing things out and trying new things. And I, I'm sure that you could say the same for Viterbi, right? I mean, it's a place of um, experimentation and ideas. And so I think that um, really kind of exemplifies the culture of, of USD as a whole. Um, and I would say that, you know, kind of a unique differentiator about this program is that you have access to faculty from two world-class schools at a top two university. You know, Viterbi and Annenberg are both, you know, 
um, have very strong um, reputations, right, in their respective fields. So I think that's really kind of a unique um, differentiator for this program. Um, when can we expect to hear back about our admissions? So our deadline is um, December 15th, right? We changed it this year, but it's a little bit earlier. Um, probably not until, um, I would say, beginning of March at the earliest. So we have a large volume of applications. We'll start reviewing files probably around the middle of January at the earliest. We have to process, admissions has to process all of them. So yeah, generally early March is probably the soonest um, that we'll be starting to um, return decisions. Um, can you take more than the suggested or requirement amount of electives? So if you want to pay the extra USD tu tuition to take extra classes, by all means you can. Um, you know, our, our tuition is, um, not bargain, right? Um, so it's, it, but but it's, you know, so yeah, I have I actually had a student contact me because they wanted to take a class in the School of Pharmacology. I'm not really sure what that class was or why they were interested, but I said, if you get clearance and you wanna go take a pharmacology class, you can, it won't count towards your degree requirements, but you can. So, um, so yes, you know, I, and because I think I didn't mention this before, but for your electives, you are limited to taking them in Viterbi and Annenberg. Um, so you can't, so you might say, oh, there's a cool class in cinema. Um, you could take that class, but it just wouldn't count towards your degree requirements um, for this particular program. So, wow, all really great questions. Thank you, everyone. Um, I think I got to all of them, but please let me know if there are any others that you have. I'll also say that I, you know, I included my email in the chat. Please feel free to follow up if you had specific, you know, kind of questions about your particular case. Um, happy to, you know, follow up by email or even a Zoom if that's helpful. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. Thank and then you. Jessica, would you like me to just kind of mention at this time just um, what we do with the partial scholarships that we offer? Yes, please. That would be great. Thank sure. you. Yeah. So. Um, in reference to what um, Professor Neff was saying about the application deadline, it is December the 15th. And so definitely uh, make sure you apply by that date because we do have some partial scholarships. So thanks to the Annenberg School and the Viterbi School, we're able to cover up to eight units um, for a couple of students um, towards your program. So please do, uh, if, if uh, the scholarships are something that's important to you, please make sure you apply um, well before that December 15th deadline. Great, thank you. All right, so um, so yeah, I realize our deadline is coming up soon. So reach out with any questions. I hope to see you know some of your files come across my desk in the new year. And please don't hesitate to reach out with any final questions as you're wrapping up your application. Thank you so much. All right, thank you everyone. Have a great evening.